The situation with Claudine Gay at Harvard is one that's caused a lot of commentators to react. Um, it is a serious situation and raises questions of academic freedom as based against the freedom of the community as a whole. We've had a fairly large number of um, commentators weigh in who can't seem to stop noticing that Claudine Gay is a black woman. I'm sure she probably has realised this by this time in her life. Um, we had Mr Webb on History Debunk this morning um, going on about the iniquities of the colour bar. However, he then jumped to going on about the horrors of diversity. And I, I prepared a small presentation to deal with some of the issues in this. I'm going to share it now in a moment. Here we go. Simon Webb, Claudine Gay is on her way out. This is the, I'm going to take, use this as an opening proposition by Simon Webb. I've had to copy and paste from the transcripts um, YouTube creates, which is hideous because they don't pick up nuances of speech or dialect very well. But anyway, hello again. Older viewers will probably remember an awful and iniquitous system which once operated in both Britain and America. It was known by various names, and in Britain, most people called it the colour bar. It meant that applicants for jobs, universities, place rack of accommodations for rent would be refused for another reason that they were black. This was disgusting, and I'm sure that all right-thinking people reject such practices today. I'm sure they do, Simon, and it was indeed disgusting. However, in both nations, there is a similarly unacceptable system operating which entails giving people jobs, university places, and so on because they are black. Simon starts out well here by rejecting such notions as a colour bar. His apparent concern with such matters, though, is undercut by the final line, which he starts to undress the lying claim, which will drive the narrative of his presentation, where he comments on there is a similarly unacceptable system operating which entails giving people jobs at university and place on soil because they are black. He tries to push the narrative throughout his video that Claudine Gay was given this her job and her position because she was black. I'm going to try and dismantle that because I consider it a very dangerous claim to make. Here we go, page two. Simon's claims regarding Claudine Gay. Gay. We can summarise Simon's claims, or some of them, about Claudine thusly. The claims Claudine was appointed because she's black. Let us deal with this claim first in a few moments. Simon gave us a link to a Wikipedia page detailing Claudine's history. Given that he supplied this link, he should have thus no objection to me using it in Trala to just demonstrate why she has reduced this topic down to a mere talking shop of what could be deemed racist talking points, despite his opening remarks condemning such outlooks. The claim she is an anti-Semite, I will deal with this in the next section. The claim she was plagiarist, I will deal with this towards the end of this presentation. And I have several questions I wish to ask Simon about the subject of plagiarism at that point. Here are some of Claudine's academic history below. I will also be looking at sections of her doctorate in a, as we go on. I may push this into another presentation, as this one is going to get quite long. Early life and education. Gay grew up the child of Haitian immigrants who came to the United States and met in New York City as students. Her mother studied nursing and her father studied engineering. There are probably diversity hires. <laughs> You know, they, 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 was, they were probably just pushed into these positions, at least if we go by the Simon Webb route. Gay spent much of her childhood first in New York and then Saudi Arabia, where her father worked for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Definitely a diversity hire. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers would never check the standard of workmanship or engage in anything quite so silly, would they, Simon? While her mother was a registered nurse, Gay is a cousin of writer Roxanne Gay, who's a, a professor elsewhere. Gay attended Phillips Exeter Academy, a private boarding school in Exeter, New Hampshire, which costs a shed load to attend, from which she graduated in 1988. She then attended Princeton University for one year before transferring to Stanford University, where she studied economics. Notice how Simon gave you the link, but doesn't tell you the background, because Simon knows a good 75 to 80 percent of people on his channel never read these links. They just nod and go, that's the boy, he knows them things, he's got the knowledge. She received the Anna Laws Myers Prize for Best Undergraduate Thesis in Economics and graduated in 1992. Gay earned a PhD in 1998 from Harvard, where she won the university's Topan Prize for the Best Dissertation in Political Science. Academic career, after graduating, Gay was an assistant professor and later tenured associate professor in Stanford University's Department of Political Science from 2000 to 2006. 
In the 2003 to 2004 academic year, Gay was a fellow at the Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences. Gay's research addresses American political behavior, including voter turnout and politics for race and identity. She was recruited by Harvard to be a professor of government in 2006 and was appointed professor of African American studies in 2007. Simon, however, characterizes Claudine in what might be seen as a dismissive manner and a rather dismissive manner at that. She is, needless to say, a professor of American studies. While this is true, it is also a pertinent example of how you can tell the truth, but also facilitate a reaction among your audience by omitting context. Notice that Webb makes no mention of Claudine studying economics or background in political science. He notes she is a professor of African-American studies, as if ipso facto this must be true as she is a black woman. I have commented before that if you are black or from several other ethnic minorities, then Simon seems to create particular parameters, which means you're effectively damned if you do and damned if you don't. These might be briefly summarised as if you do study and obtain degrees, Simon will tend to mock the accomplishment, particularly if it involves black people in particular fields. I've yet to see him mock anyone white for studying history or a cultural heritage associated with their own ethnic or national background. If you don't study, Simon tends to make use of a variation on the old American welfare cream trope and use subtle and often none too subtle hints that the, they are wasters or they, degree, they are useless and are not doing anything. And he will tend to move towards some races are naturally less inc academically inclined at some point. If you're lucky and catch up on a particular gay, you'll get a story about fluffy dogs. He will also sprinkle these perorations with qualifiers as such. Of course, this is totally ridiculous. And fortunately, we no longer believe this and numerous hedging phrases of a similar kind. Now, let's move on to the accusation that Claudine Gray is anti-Semitic. The question of whether Claudine Gay is anti-Semitic or not is one Simon raises. Before we go any further, I want to make it very plain I have no time for any moronic comments about wooden doors or any of this nonsense or Austrian painters. If you do this, I shall remove your comments from this video forthwith. I also don't want to hear stuff dehumanizing Palestinians that will be removed as well forthwith. I've reproduced some of Webb's points regarding this below. Since I am copying and pasting from the transcript of what he has to say, and given the limitations of YouTube, I've had to tidy it up and infer some full stops to try and enhance the readability of this quote. Simon is at liberty to ask me to move the full stops somewhere else or move the commas around. Uh, YouTube's transcription system was not really meant for voice dictation and tends to make a, a great mash of immense proportions of whatever you have to say, especially if you have a strong accent or mumble a bit or a lead words as occurs in some dialects. Because of a raising, rising anti-Semitism at American universities, Congress asked the heads of some important universities to come and give evidence this month and say of anti-Semitism violated their codes of conduct. Simple enough, reasonably. The question of asked of Claudine Gay, the witted and racially acceptable head of Harvard, was straightforward. Would calling for the genocide of the Jewish people violate the code of conduct at Harvard? Her answer was that it depended on the context. It's hard to imagine that she would have given the same answer had the discussion turned to calls for the genocide of African Americans. If students at Harvard were calling for the murder of black people simply on the grounds that they're black, would that not really violate the code of conduct at Harvard? Again, I imagine it would depend on what the situation were, whether it was a hypothetical discussion panel with people swapping around to consider a point or whatever. One of the problems here, I think, is uh, communication. Uh, Claudine's coming from a world of academia and is sounds evasive. However, I should note that other figures were called to testify before Congress. Simon has picked the one black figure, rather interestingly. I, I will agree, however, that the answer was somewhat evasive and she could have done better. However, I also reproduced part of Claudine's gay speeches from a Shabbat dinner below. Remarks at Harvard Hillel. It is an honor for my husband, Chris, and I to he be here tonight to celebrate Shabbat with you. I'm told that this week's Torah portion recounts the story of Abraham, the founder of the world's great monotistic faiths. In this week's reading, God tells Abraham that Abraham will be a blessing. Not that Abraham will receive a blessing, that will be he will be a blessing. 
He is tasked with becoming a light, blessing in the life of others, taking an active role in bringing light into a world that is so often full of darkness. The responsibility to be blessing, to bring light to each other and to the world resonates with me and my hope for Harvard. The past few weeks have been full of darkness. First came the horrific terrorist attacks on October 7th, in which 1,400 Jewish people were murdered by Hamas and more than 200 others were taken hostage. Then came the escalating humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Here in the US, we are witnessing a surge in anti-Jewish incidents and rhetoric across the nation on our own campus. The ancient spectre of anti-Semitism, that persistent and corrosive hatred has returned with renewed force. According to one report, incidents of anti-Semitism nationally have almost tripled over the past six years. Here at Harvard, I've heard story after story of Jewish students feeling increasingly uneasy or even threatened on campus. We should all be alarmed by this. I am. Does this sound like an anti-Semite, Simon? Would an anti-Semite come out with that? I want to acknowledge the profound toll this has taken, especially on our Jewish students, faculty and staff. Your fear, grief and anger are heard and felt deeply. As we grapple with this resurgence of bigotry, I want to make one thing absolutely clear. Anti-Semitism has no place at Harvard. There is a link to this document on my original. However, I'd, uh, I will also post links to everything else I'm talking about. Finally, before I do some closing conclusion remarks, Claudine Gay and plagiarism. That issue is still undergoing investigation. I don't wish to talk about it too much because given that I'm a doctorate level student, I'd probably have an ethics committee bouncing off me for talking about matters like this that weren't settled in another university. I will say there do seem to be some possible concerns. I will also note that, however, people going back to amend research is not that all, all that terribly unusual. It does happen. People amend a bit, amend a bit here, amend, oh, look, I've forgotten a citation here or something. So long as it doesn't reach beyond a certain point, it's generally a, an acceptable practice. It's when it starts becoming big chunks of work, it isn't. I do have a question for Simon, though, before I get to the end of this. Are you aware of Ed Hutton's history concerning this? You've done a video with him. You've chatted with him. You've stated here in, in your presentation today about Claudine that you find she to be difficult. Here is a university in Finland on Twitter giving their view of Ed Dutton. Edward Dutton is not employed by University of Oulu, and his actions do not represent our values emphasising equal and responsibly. With current legislation, it is not possible to withdraw the title of docent, but discussions on that are ongoing with Finnish universities. And here's a news article on him. Docent at the University Gil Olu Gillespie plagiarism denies intentionality. The group investigating scientific misconduct considers docent Edward Dutton of the University of Olu guilty of plagiarism. The final report says that Dutton violated the guidelines on research integrity regarding the source of the article published in 2030. If you're aware of this, when you're engaged in a series of chats with him, discourse with, with him, then the question at this point is, why are you not holding Dutton to the same standard as Claudine Gay? Why, if you are not aware of that, I presume you will not be holding any more chats with, with uh, Mr. Dutton, as you've now been made aware I'm going to conclude with this. The accusations against Gay are serious. However, Simon has reduced them. She's black and prob was probably appointed as a diversity hire. I submit that this is a nasanine way to approach such a serious issue. The concerns regarding anti-Semitic attitudes, and I view that term as Jews and Palestine's attitudes are real. However, I would further submit he, cheap he has cheapened the debate here by injecting attitudes regarding ethnicity into the discourse in a style that is thoroughly unpleasant. Finally, as I noted earlier, with regard to issues of plagiarism, I presume you're now aware of Dutton having been found to engage in this and condemned for it by a Finnish university. You apply the same standard of rigor, moral rigour to interactions with Dutton as you would with Claudine Gay and act accordingly. Have a good evening, Simon.